Hey there and welcome to this closer look at the new multipad feature in DivisiMate 2. One of the core parts of DivisiMate has always been the perform page, where you can organize and load different orchestrations quickly and easily. This works by assigning different presets to the pads on the perform page and switching between them with the mouse using the MIDI remote or using DVZ Control, our remote control app for Android and iOS. Multipads are a way to combine multiple orchestrations within a single pad on the perform page. Within this multipad, the orchestrations get switched automatically while playing based on specific conditions. In this video, we will first look at the functionality of the multipad, the different things you can adjust and how you work with it. And then we will look at a number of hands-on examples that demonstrate this new tool in action and share some tips and tricks. Let's get started. So first, let's create a multipad in this performance by right-clicking on an empty slot and selecting Create Multipad. Next, I can label this pad with a title, let's call this one Test, and then we get to the multipad editor. You can also click on an existing preset and create a multipad from that, which will automatically transfer the preset into the first slot of the new multipad. This is the multipad editor. So at first glance, this looks like a sort of mini perform page with nine slots on a three by three grid. But the big difference is these two areas that you see on the X and Y axis of the grid. Right now they are empty, but let me add some presets to the matrix to demonstrate. As soon as I have two presets assigned here, you can see that this X axis here has been subdivided by a slider. On the end of the slider it says top note and when I move this slider I can select a specific note. Now this does the following. If I play something and the highest note is below G3, it will load the preset on the left. But as soon as what I play crosses the threshold and goes above G3, it immediately switches to the other preset. So this area here defines the conditions by which the multipad automatically switches between presets. If I add a third preset to the right, you see that the slider gets a third subdivision that defines the breakpoint for the third preset. And when I add presets on the y-axis, expanding the matrix vertically, I get the same kind of slider here on the left. You can choose from a list of different conditions on each axis by clicking on the name of the condition. In DivisiMate 2.0, you can switch presets by key velocity, highest and lowest playing note, different CCs or pitch wheel. On the top right, you can choose the transition mode that should be used to switch between these presets. Retrigger will immediately stop all notes from the previous preset and triggers all the same notes in the new preset. Merge will essentially do the same thing, but if there's common note between the orchestrations, those will just keep playing instead of stopping and starting again. And Overlap allows you to play multiple orchestrations at the same time, where old notes just keep playing in the old preset while new notes are played by the new orchestration. If you want to addition your presets without constantly changing orchestrations as you play, you can simply suspend the multipad by turning off this power button on the bottom left. Now you can select presets with the mouse and play them in isolation. This button resets when you close the multipad editor. And finally down here you can choose what keyboard range the switches from the multipad should react to. So if you want the top and low note conditions here to ignore notes that happen in the melody range, you can just deselect it here. Those are the controls to configure the multipad. If you really like something you have built, you can save it as a multipad preset here. This only saves the multipad configuration and not the presets. This way you don't have 15 duplicates of your presets in your folder if you build multiple different multipads with the same presets. But this also means that you should keep in mind that your multipad presets can break when you don't have the corresponding presets in your preset folders. For safely transferring multipads between systems, we recommend exporting and importing the full performance, which saves and copies all the orchestration presets as well. This way, everything is guaranteed to work when you share multipads with other users. So those are the core features and principles of the multipad. Not too complicated, but there are a lot of different uses for this that allow you to build really inspiring playable patches, save time keeping things balanced, or just go completely crazy with it. Let me give you some examples what this can be used for and we'll touch on some more details on the way. When you're writing chords in the trombones and you get into the lowest octave, a simple triad starts to sound a little bit intransparent.
When you study orchestration, you may come across something called low interval limits. That's a guideline for the lowest possible positions where different intervals can be played without sounding muddy. For the minor or major third, those limits are here and here. So according to this guideline, if my root note is going below these limits, an open voicing will lead to a more transparent sound than a closed one. I have two presets here, one with trombones playing three voices as played on the keyboard and one preset automatically transforming it into an open voicing. Now I want to build a patch where I play my trombones in triads, but once I cross the low interval limit for the major third, I want it to automatically switch to an open voicing. So I put the presets next to each other and set lowest note as the condition. I'll put the breakpoint for the lowest note of the triad to A sharp 1, which is the enharmonic equivalent of the B we see here. And that's all! Now I can play simple triads and depending on their position they get revoiced to an open triad to keep the sound warm and transparent. Here I have this fun little orchestration with strings playing pizzicato doubled with woodwinds an octave above. It's already assigned to my multipad. I will use this as a starting point to show you how to build velocity sensitive orchestrations where certain instruments join in when you hit the key harder. While I'm in my multipad and have my orchestration selected, I can double click on a preset or hit the tab key to go to the orchestrate page without leaving the multipad editor on the perform page. That's a useful little trick. Now I want to expand on this orchestration and make it a little bit bigger and make it sparkle. So let me put the xylophone on the top note and add the glockenspiel but an octave above and have the Celesta play the chord as well. And now to add some extra sparkle and punch, I'll have the tambourine play a hit on every note. I used the transformer plugin for this, mapping all notes to the C3, which is where the single hit is mapped in the instrument. And then I also route the bass note in the timpani and drop it down an octave to give it some punch. This sounds good and I could just save this as a new preset and put it into my multipad editor from there. But there is a better way. Now that I've added a bunch of instruments on top of my original smaller orchestration, I can go back to the perform page and find myself back in the multipad editor because I never closed it. I can now right click on an empty slot and choose create new from current. This creates a new preset from the current orchestration and immediately assigns it to the slot on the multipad. This works on the normal perform page too, by the way. So now I can have the multipad switch between presets by velocity at a specific point and have the orchestration grow bigger depending on how hard I hit the keys. Now I can repeat this and double click on this preset to use it as a base for a third orchestration that is even bigger. When I edit the preset this way on the orchestrate page with the multipad editor open in the background, the multipad will be suspended so the orchestration will not be switching while I figure out my next orchestration. So now I can build a larger orchestration, bringing in the brass, setting up some more percussions and with the three orchestrations in the multipad, I can go from a tiny soft orchestration to a full-blown tutti. Whether you use this for a live performance or for inspiration in a composing context, this can be incredibly fun to play. This velocity switch works especially well for short notes, but when you're looking at long notes, you might want to use a CC like the mod wheel on CC1 for this and use the merge mode to have the orchestrations grow and shrink. But the principle and workflow is still the same. A 
Another CC that can be used to switch orchestrations is the sustain pedal. I have two presets here that use the arpeggiator to create basic rhythms in my string section. One preset has the arpeggiator set to 8th notes, and the other one to 16th notes. I can now select the CC condition here on the x-axis and enter CC number 64, which is the sustain pedal. Now I can switch between the presets. When I hold down the sustain pedal, the 16th notes are playing. And when the pedal is up, it's all 8th notes. And I can go back and forth right in the middle of a phrase. And this is a useful example to look again at the transition modes, because the difference is really important here. If I play the same thing in re-trigger mode, the preset changes instantaneously, but the ARP stumbles for a short moment and it doesn't stay in time. This happens because the whole chord is getting re-triggered and the arpeggiator is actually stopping and starting up again here. If I use merge mode, the arpeggiator does not stumble on preset change and I can switch between 16th and 8th notes with the sustain pedal in the middle of a chord and it still stays fluid and in time. But what happens in overlap mode? When I set it to overlap and press the sustain pedal while playing a chord, nothing happens at first. But I can now hold the sustain pedal and play new 16th notes on top of it that sync up with the other arpeggiators. I used really simple presets for this demonstration, but you can of course do more sophisticated things and combine full orchestrations, different instrument colors, add little woodwind flourishes or brass throw-ins on top of a pattern using this technique. It's all up to you what orchestrations you want to switch and combine here. Since the combinations of conditions are completely flexible and open, you can get really into the weeds and build really complex stuff that suits your personal performance needs. This last one is actually more of a hack, something that was discovered by a user on our Discord server shortly after release. But something like this has been requested a number of times over the past years, so we thought we should share this technique even though we didn't originally intend it. You can actually build key switchable patches using the multipad editor. You can do this by putting three different presets on the x-axis and making sure that all of these presets have the low range enabled in the same area. I want to switch between these presets by pressing the keys C0, D0 and E0. To achieve this, I select the lowest note condition and disable the voices and melody buttons here. Now only notes in the low range actually trigger this condition. Now I set the first breakpoint to C sharp 0, so C0 and anything below loads the first preset and the second breakpoint to D sharp 0. This way pressing a D0 loads the middle preset and an E0 loads the third preset. Now you have essentially three key switchable orchestrations. You can blow up this concept to ridiculous scale by utilizing the top note condition on the y-axis as well. Set the breakpoint to F0 and G0 and these two presets get loaded on the next few key switches. And then, since I'm using the top note and low note conditions here, I can actually access these four pads as well by pressing the lower key switch and the upper key switch together. So if you really want to key switch between nine different orchestrations, this is the way you can achieve that with the multipad editor. It is definitely a bit convoluted and takes some time to wrap your head around, but it's a fun example of how far you can push this tool and also just a really viable way of working once it's set up. We could be here all day setting up different kinds of multipad configurations with different orchestrations. The amount of possibilities for building playable and customizable patches with this new tool are huge. We will certainly share more examples in the future, but for this video, let's leave it at that. I hope this tutorial succeeded at showing you the capabilities of the Multipad Editor and give you some ideas how you can utilize it in your work with DBZMate. 
Feel free to join our Discord server to discuss with other users and exchange tips and tricks there. You'll find the invite link in the video description. And of course, subscribe to this channel to see all the new tutorials coming up. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.